Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Talking Buffalo, part of the Blue Wire Network. I am Patrick Moran. Thank you, as always, for locking in, whether you're listening to this on the audio side, whether you're watching on YouTube. I appreciate everybody. Welcome today. Today is Tuesday, uh, July 18th. I am joined for a second consecutive week. My good friend, Sports writer, sports media personality, Joe Yurden. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm uh <laughs> I, I was telling you before we started recording because it's smoky outside. I've had to have had my windows closed up all day, and uh me being lazy has not worked in my favor because the my window AC unit that I can only basically break out in case of emergency is uh down in the basement, which is three floors down and up, which includes some really rickety wooden steps. So uh, it's a little warm in here today. <laughs> the, the fans can only do so much. So let me ask yeah. you a question right off the bat, because I'm always thinking about like when I open a show, when I close a show and, you know, doing close it in on 600 of these now. And I've had you on far and away more than anybody else. But whether you're doing this show or whether you're doing the maintenance day podcast with Lance Lazowski or you're just, you know, a host of other shows that you'll guest on from time to time. When you start a show, and somebody says, or do you still say to people, like I just did to you, hey, Joe, how you, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? I don't know anything else to say. And the funny thing is, is I already know how you're doing because <laughs> nine times out of 10, we've talked all day and then we'll talk for a handful of minutes before we even start taping the show. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. What else yeah. are you really supposed to say, though? You know, it's like, I don't know what to say, it's, man. It's I like, think, how I, you I, doing? Like, maybe it's not for me. It's for everybody else, I guess. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I think it's kind of a friendly way to, to start things off. You know, it's uh, it's sure. the, the ultimate icebreaker. Or maybe, I don't know, if you're on a dating app, maybe the worst icebreaker. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, if, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, listen, it, it gets everybody warmed up and like eases into well eased into the show because we don't yeah. like come blasting out hot takes immediately and it's like jesus Not we just turn this on come on <laughs> well today won't be i don't want to say they're going to be filled with hot takes what we're going to do is a uh a segment that i haven't really done on the show before it's called agree or disagree and i'll just be asking you or i won't even be asking you i'll be firing off a, a bunch of takes statements whatever you want to call them most of them are regarding the bills and the sabers some will be about some other stuff, and quite simply, Joe's either going to agree with what I say or he's going to disagree with what I say. And for the record, these aren't necessarily my personal takes. You know what I'm saying? I'm just putting statements mm -hmm. out there and, and to get your feel if you agree or you disagree on them. So plenty of bills and savers will be able to tie into that. By the way, every time, you know, getting into an intro, I always talk about you doing, you know, your Noted Hockey, which again, go to NotedHockey.com, five bucks per month. That's awesome. Um, I also talk a lot about you doing the podcast that you and Lance do, Maintenance Day. I But sometimes I forget that you actually also write for Bleacher Report. <laughs> and I was checking it out shortly before we started taping today. You just posted this on Monday, I should say, because it's dropping on Tuesday. You got an article up on Bleacher Report. You're grading the progress of uh, 11 NHL teams that are rebuilding. And by the way, go to YouTube or uh, YouTube, go to Twitter. If you, if you don't, you know, know how to navigate around Bleacher Report, just follow Joe on Twitter at Joe Yurden and you can just click that link and uh, go check it out. Fun stuff doing rebuilding grades and with yeah. no curve, as you said in your, in your tweet. <laughs> I, yeah, I listen, things like this are fun to do. Plus it keeps me on my toes for, you know, what's going on around. Like, not that I'm like completely you know, pigeonholed in on what the Sabres are have going on because right now, not a lot. They're not doing a whole like, heck of a lot right now, but, sure. um, but, it, but it lets me kind of get checked back in with, with some of the, with some of the teams in the league and especially the teams that aren't, that are probably not really getting a lot of the main, the, you know, the main mm -hmm. the mainstream treatment because uh, they're not too good. Um, but it was, it was, it was fun to look, to go through it and, uh, go through some of these teams, and it's it's funny because I'm going to be on Calgary Radio Tuesday morning. So maybe this is I don't know. It depends on when this goes up. It may, you might you might be able to be able to hear it, but um, mm -hmm. but uh, but they're having me on, and Calgary wasn't one of the teams that uh that I said was uh, part of the rebuilding process. And I'll I'll spoiler alert it right now. The reason why because it 
I'm not even sure if they've they've realized they're rebuilding yet because <laughs> they, they, I, they they've had everybody that up there says they want to leave town. So I don't know if that's a rebuild or if it's just a or if it's just an exodus. So yeah, I don't know. But um, but yeah, it's it, it's fun. Like I I don't get a lot of the blowback on Twitter. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I mean sometimes people come out of the woodwork. And mind you, I keep the quality filter on on Twitter because I just I, there's too much nonsense. But um. But it's but you know occasionally you get somebody be like I don't know if I agree with that but I see some of your points and like that to me is like the best compliment on something like that you know because a lot of people can be like oh man I love that so awesome that's great or be like screw you buddy you suck I'm like okay those are the those are the two poles on that one but like somebody being like nah, I don't know but you make a lot of good points that's that's the part that I like it's always good to get positive feedback I don't care who you are I don't oh, people yeah. could say. That they don't give a shit that, you know, whether they're a writer, whether they're in podcasts, in a radio or TV, whatever it may be, everybody likes to to hear compliments. You know, nobody wants to just continue to hear you suck no. and, and, and this and that. Uh, no, it's, um, it's, it's a good way to get, from, get me from being like happy go lucky to, to on the defensive, like instantaneously. Yeah. Is to be direct with an insult like that, where it cuts, it's like. All right, he stepped to me. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you know, on the opposite side, now look, not on the level that, you know, you or Lance or a lot of people cover hockey, or especially the Bills, obviously, as well. A lot of you media, men and women, get compliments or people. And I'm not even talking about necessarily on social media. I'm talking about sometimes somebody might see you out at a, at a bar, you know, you're getting something to eat somewhere or whatever. Mm-hmm. I was at, which by the way, it seems like every time I have you on, we're talking about some kind of festival going on in Buffalo because this is the time of year where shit yep. happens. Um, I was at Waldfest on Sunday. I don't even know if you've heard of this. What it the is a that? It, it's a German celebration, and okay. essentially, it's somewhere out in Easter. Where I, the exact location is escaping me right now, but anyway. Okay. It is down a hill in a ravine, and holy shit! My first time. This thing's been going on for years, and um, I've never been there before. This was my first time, and man, you want to talk about packed? This place was packed. It was really? mobbed, man. It was really cool. German music, like I said, obviously a ton of beer flowing around. Um, you know what's funny too, by the way, Joe? I I've admitted this before. I I tend to go. I don't act my age sometimes when it comes to drinking, man. I still <laughs> indulge a lot more than I should have too often. You know, I kind of try to turn back the clock a little bit too much. Anyway, on Sunday, I didn't do that. I sipped on one or two beers and, and just kind of people watched. And holy shit, people get hammered and crazy. I was looking at people, 85 degrees out too and sunny. And, you know, one of people, well, that's but I'm seeing people doing keg stands. I'm seeing people. Well, Taking naps on the on the, on on a, on a picnic table at two three o'clock in the afternoon, but um, it, it was fun. It, it was a lot of fun. But anyway, my, <laughs> my point was, uh, two people came up to me throughout the day that I have no idea, and they said, "I recognize mm-hmm. you from Twitter or your podcast." Said I enjoy your show. And you took so one step back. You're like, "Uh oh, yeah, don't punch me." Really cool. It's like, <laughs> All right. So for like you know five ten seconds, I felt kind of like you know like celebrities do a little bit, local celebrities when they when they get those props. Started having a little bit more and more, and obviously I totally appreciate that shit. It's really awesome. uh yeah, it's really cool. It's but fun, anyway, it's yeah, fun when that happens sometimes because uh, you know if I ever if it ever happens to me, it's I'm usually out at a bar with friends or something or out mm-hmm. someplace, and people say, hey, "Let me get you, let me get you a beer, let me get you a shot." And it's, yeah, that's a great feeling, man. Night, it, it carries it, on from there. It really is. Um, before we get into our agree or disagree, like I said, we're going to talk mainly Bills and Sabres stuff. A uh, couple things semi-related to, to those teams. Last week on the show, I had, and I had never met him before either. Brian Duff was on the podcast, and uh, we did one of our, you know, live from Imperial shows. And I'll tell you what, the, at this point, Joe, and, you know, closing in, like I said, on 600 of these episodes, there's not a heck of a lot of people in this area that I haven't interviewed for this podcast at some point news media especially obviously sports media but that was the first time not only first time ever having brian on the show but also the first time that i've ever had any conversation with him uh whatsoever i don't know what your dealings are with him um i know you know who he is obviously you guys you know coming to sabers and stuff really cool dude man really down to earth i was a yes. little bit surprised because if you don't know any better and you see a lot of these people on tv you figure that they got to have in some cases i don't blame them but a certain 
level of arrogance to them. If, I don't know if that's the right word, but certainly confidence for sure. Maybe a little bit overconfident, but that's kind of how you have to be, I, I think, to some extent when you're on TV. Not Brian, man. Not from the conversation I had with him. Very, uh, very down to earth, chill. Mm-hmm. Dude, we pounded about three or four beers too. That was always fun too, <laughs> nice. before and after the show. But he stuck around <laughs> after the show. The owner of Imperial Pizza wanted to meet him, so he, you nice. know, he, he introduced up to Brian, and they talked for a good half hour. There were a handful of fans that you know, you know hey Brian, and, and he stopped and he talked to them all. It's a really chill, cool dude, man. Um, again, I don't, I don't know if you know him on a personal level at all, but uh. I had a lot of fun doing that show. So he he was a really cool dude. Yeah, Duffer's Duffer's one of the night one of the good people out there. I, I remember getting to meet him. Geez, I think it was back when I was with NBC, and it was I think it was the All Star Game in Raleigh in 2011. I think it was 2011, 2011, 2012, whatever year that was. Um, and I think Duffer was working for NHL Network at that time. And I think I met him there, and I was like, I was like, wow, was, hey, really nice to meet you. Blah 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 blah, and and. When you know it, the the moment I moved to Buffalo, uh, you know I, I get here and you know Duffer's Duffer's working, you know doing the pregame stuff to, and hosting all that, and, you know doing 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 a little everything. Mm-hmm. And I see Duffer, I was just like, hey, hey Duff, hey, I don't know if you remember me. He was, oh yeah, I remember you. And I was like, okay, all right, cool. So now so now we work together all the time. Uh, and yeah, I, I would say we're buddies. I mean, uh, what was it? We, uh, we both wound up at the, uh, the same joy wave show. I think it was like a year ago. Uh, yeah. uh, joy wave from uh rock band from Rochester. The lead singer is a humongous Sabres fan. I think the whole band is full of Sabres fans. If I remember correctly, there might be a couple, maybe a couple, a couple of guys with different opinions, but, uh, but Daniel's uh, Daniel's a huge fan. And he, he was, he was absolutely tickled that we both made it to the show that night. <laughs> and he, you know, he invites us backstage and whole thing. And it's like, you feel like a rock star for something like that. And it's, you know, Duffer and I are just a couple of regular regular dudes just you know just we both like music and and the lead singer of a band that's pretty good pretty damn yeah. good uh says like hey man it'd be cool to cool to meet you and like i guess i might say no i know duffer would never say no but mm-hmm. uh but yeah it's it's awesome like like duffer's into music he's a big beer guy yeah uh, i love just sh- shooting the crap with him i can't talk baseball with him though he's an he's an ass houston man. yeah can't do that. <laughs> yeah, really cool dude, man. Um, a couple things I didn't know about him because again, I never had a conversation with him before, but he paid his dues before he got to Buffalo. You know, he spent oh, yeah. like 20 years in other markets, uh, mm-hmm. building his way towards here. And yeah, talked spent a lot of time talking about music. He went to go see Taylor Swift a couple weeks ago. Um nice. Uh, that, that, I know it's not your favorite artist. One of mine, though. I was uh I'm indifferent, was, so that's that's fine. <laughs> I was legit jealous, and it was funny because you've done a live show with me in Imperial before with Rachel Hotmeyer, and I tell Brian the story, and pretty much everybody since you guys were on the show about the little girl who unplugged our uh, outlet, our power (laughs) twice. And the second time we had to restart the show because of that. I say that because we were, if you remember, we were at the booth inside. Well, it's been, now we're in the summertime and it's just so nice out. So I've been doing these last, I had Lance Lazowski on a couple of weeks ago, on Sal and Mapo Bay. Mm -hmm. And and now I'm Brian. We've been outside for the last handful of weeks. That's the best way. It's a lot of fun, but the motorcycles go crazy sometimes. And there was a little kid who was trying to climb up the rail to get on camera. Somebody else was behind us sticking up their thumbs like that. During a, and you're going live. You know, we're live what? streaming. So it's like, you got to deal with it. What do you, what, what you got? Like, where are the parents to be yeah. like, hey, don't well, climb on the camera? That's well, expensive. Yes. With the, <laughs> with the kid, yes. But the adults, I mean, still doing ain't got no parents. He's probably as old as you and I. So, <laughs> try wow. to get himself on the camera in the background. But anyway. uh, Were they giving you the fun. bunny ears or, you know you know flipping you guys the bird or anything no no idea but there were a couple of people yelling for brian uh like i said during the show the owner of imperial came up to me he doesn't realize he's he's not you know really into these shows typically I, maybe he thought we were just doing audio and not video because right up to and shakes my hand like while we're actually talking on the air yeah um but anyway yeah it's a lot of fun i love doing those shows at uh imperial no show this week two weeks from now though i'm gonna have john fina former buffalo bill so that'll be a lot nice. of fun good crowd will be there uh for that real quick too, one other thing, Joe, and I, this has got nothing to do with Buffalo sports, but I just got to throw some props out. And then I will ask you a question about this. So maybe it'll tie it in a little bit, but I want to get props to a kid and he's not a Buffalo kid. In fact, he's born and raised and lives in Arizona. His name is, um, his name's Anthony Imhoff. I, I, he got drafted by the Chicago White Sox in last week's MLB draft. And, and I bring him up because 
my best friend in high school, this girl, Dino, we were literally inseparable, still keep in touch. This one of the good things about social media where you can connect with old friends and still talk to them. She lives in Arizona. Obviously I'm here in, uh, in Buffalo, but anyway, that's your son. And what, nice. a, what, a, what a thrill that's gotta be again, 18th round, um, by the Chicago white Sox. I just, it, it got me thinking. Now I had a cousin who actually got drafted by the New York Yankees back in 2017, not, you know, a handful of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle Zurek spent four years in the organization, only got as high as a uh, Tampa single a level kind of, I don't want to say he fizzled out, but he he left the Yankees. Usually the, like that's usually the point where it's like you're you're either going for it or you're getting out. Right, exactly. And then he spent a year, four months with the Detroit Tigers in 2022. And after that, basically, he got out of baseball. He's like, I'm not going to make a great living ever doing this. So to his credit, you know, he's going on and he's living a life, his life, and he's in a really good profession. But anyway, my point was, the thrill it must be to to have a a, a cousin or a friend or nephew niece whatever it may be and especially if it's your kid getting drafted that moment and she had a video too i watched it on facebook it was amazing they announced his name and the mlb draft like you know only the first certain amount of rounds are actually televised but then they got like this station i guess some satellite outlet where they'll just announce to put the logo up and announce the name anyway it was done live and the reaction was awesome have you ever growing up or as an adult do you do you know of any like do you have any childhood friends or any friends of a friend who, you know, who had somebody who might've gotten drafted by a team or something like that? Just that throw. I, like I said, I had my, my, my cousin Kyle Zirak with the Yankees a handful of years ago outside of that. None, but what a, I just, I, I just can't imagine what a thrill that would be. Man. Yeah. I, I I'm trying to remember there was, there was a, a guy that played on our high school team. I, uh, again, a, a vowed nerd here. I, I, did the stat book for the team my senior year. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot, there's an interesting story that goes along with it. I'm just, I'll save that for another time. But, um, but he was, uh, he was a lefty pitcher for, for our team. And he, I think he wound up in, wound up in like rookie ball or a ball with, with, uh, I think it was Cincinnati. I think it was Cincinnati, but he, he, but he was there and then he hurt his arm and then he was, he had to give it up after that. But, there was a kid that I went to college with in North Adams, Massachusetts, who was on the baseball team there, who was a pre- pretty damn good pitcher. Uh, you know, especially you know D three level. You're thinking, you, know, you see this guy throwing, and you're like, okay, this guy's got this guy's got something here. And apparently, some scouts had noticed that he ended up getting drafted by the Giants uh, in 2002. Uh, I think he had transferred to to uh, UMass and Amherst at that point because a D three arm that's that good. You're not going to stick around in D three too long. Right. Some, somebody's going to notice you, but he ended up going to UMass. He got drafted. Uh, I got drafted by San Francisco and he made it as high as triple a, he was real close to getting to the major leagues, which would have made him. I just had to look this up right now. It would have made him the third player ever from North, from North Adams state college, mass college, liberal arts, whatever to make it to the major leagues. One of those guys played 14 years in the majors was Ken Hill pitcher for the red Sox back then oh, so, wow. like, so like, that's very esteemed company for a guy that you know was playing in the middle of the berkshires up in the mountains and you know in front of like 12 people including me being a yutz on calling doing play-by-play and color on the radio for the games and stuff so mm-hmm. like yeah it's uh it was it was a really cool thing to watch him progress but yeah he didn't I think he was very close to getting a call and the call didn't come or whatever. I, I forget what the what the deal was. I don't know, maybe baseball reference is wrong, but yeah, those those are the two guys that stick out. There were some other kids from my high school, like I think after after I was gone that ended up making it to the majors. There was a kid named Mahoney who was who either got called with Colorado or Florida. Uh, but he got again, he got hurt. He made it to the majors. He got to play in the majors, but he got hurt and then he never made it back. But yeah. It's, it's, it's cool. Like baseball is still like the one sport where there's a good chance somebody you grew up with or somebody in the neighborhood or even somebody like around your home areas probably got a good chance of making it to the majors because there's just so many teams, there's so many jobs, there's so much everything. Yeah, for sure. It, it's just, it, it's a great feeling. And, and the football side, he's not blood family, but he's like family. I've had Damone, Damone Harris from Houston, Texas. I've had him on the mm-hmm. show several times. Um, he's my nephew's best friend, but anyway, it was cool to follow his journey. Anyway, I just wanted to throw some props out. I just thought that was really cool. So congratulations to, uh, my good friend, Dean or kid getting drafted by, uh, the white Sox. You want to feel old for a second? 
before we dive into some shit here. Always. Bury I always, me. well, I, I can't avoid it. I just, yeah, just bury me. Well, I'll make you feel old and it makes me feel old too. We're both, we've talked about this many times on this show. We're both New York Yankee fans. That's one thing that we definitely have in common. Um, Donnie baseball turns 62 years old today, man. My, probably one of my favorite, well, definitely not probably. He's definitely one of my favorite Yankee players of all time. Donnie Baseball, man, the captain, uh, 62 years old. Damn, 62. That's, uh, yeah, that, that's tough because <laughs> I think about being a kid and watching, you know, being in Yankee Stadium. It watching brings him, me back. You know, on TV, you know. I, you know, I was probably still a little too young for his MVP season. I was like, what, it was 84? I was like five. So, yeah, that was, uh, but he was my guy. Like, that was Don, Don, Don Mattingly was my dude growing up. So, that was, uh, that's, that's, that's tough to hear. I've been already wrestling with being 44, man, and like just looking around at everything and being like, where the hell did the time go? Like, just stupid. But like, yeah, you hear that and it's just like, Jesus Christ, why? Hey, Please. Is he on your list of your all-time favorite Yankee players? Yeah. Oh, he he's no, he's still number one. Um, oh yeah, yeah, for number one. He, he's still number one. Um, because it, I mean, it, it's always the first that sticks with you, like the first guy that really makes an impression on you. Mm -hmm. And you know, Mattingly always had a mustache. My dad had a mustache growing up, so I was always like, "Oh, dad, you got a mustache." Like, <laughs> Mattingly. My dad's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." It's about as that's much of a similarity as we got there, kid. But um, but, uh, yeah, but like, it, it, you know, the whole time, you know, watching him and playing on some of those teams in the eighties and those teams were pretty damn good. And they were just lacking one aspect that wasn't as good as one other team in the division because there's no wild card. You had to win the right. division to go to the playoffs. Yeah. And like, it was a good handful of years where they just, they weren't as good as some other team or Detroit, Toronto, whoever. And like, and so like when they made the playoffs, when they got the wild card in 95, it was such a big deal because it was Mattingly's first time in the playoffs. Like he wasn't, he was just, I don't, I think he got called up after they went to the world series in 81 in the strike season. So he, he was kind of just coming in after that, but like, that was a whole other mess <laughs> back then. But, um, but, but he gets in the playoffs in 95 and still to this day, I've watched them win, you know, Titles and everything, uh, all the cool stuff, the perfect games, all these other things. My favorite moment is Mattingly hitting the home run in game two against Seattle. And it was, <laughs> it's one of my favorite videos. I, if I look it up on YouTube, the link has already been clicked a thousand times. It's like you viewed this however many times. But it's, <laughs> but it's a video where, now mind you, NBC had those broadcasts. So it was Bob Costas doing the call. This was the, I think it was the Armed Forces call because it was Gary Thorne. Uh, famous for doing NHL games with ESPN for all yeah. those years. And it's him on the call uh, for this. And he has the, the absolute perfect call for, for the home run. Cause I mean, he's, he's the hero. He's the guy. He's finally in the playoffs. He's finally getting a chance to, to, you know, to, to help the Yankees win and go and get, you know, move on and all that stuff. And he comes up right after Ruben Sierra, Ruben Sierra had just hit a home run. And like hot shotted it around the bases and you know flipped the bat the whole the whole deal like just everything great about Ruben Sierra and <laughs> Mattingly's coming up and the place is already rocking because there's just a home run hit and Gary Thorne just friggin knew man he just knew the moment was gonna was gonna be big because I mean it's the Bronx man everybody's going yeah. crazy and I think it was the second pitch. Second or third pitch, Mattingly just absolutely crushed it. Just destroyed the ball. And Thorne has this call. He's, oh, hang on to the roof. There it goes. And like he just lets the scene set itself because they're shut, they're taking cuts for the camera. The fans are going absolutely ape shit. It was such the cool thing. I'm talking about it. I get goosebumps. It's one of those <laughs> things, man. Like it's just the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And it was just my my absolute favorite moment. He didn't win. He didn't, you know, he didn't win a title. He hasn't won a man. I don't he hasn't won a manager. He has one, but I don't care. That's that's my favorite moment. You know, I, I love Bernie. Bernie Williams is probably my number two guy, but um, but Don Mattingly's the guy, man. Like that's that's it. I feel bad that he didn't stick with the team because he could have been on a title team the next year. But who knows if they trade for Tino Martinez if he's still on the team? Like there's a whole thing there. So sure. 
It's a butterfly. <laughs> yeah, we need to be careful here because you and I could go down a Yankee rabbit hole and spend a couple hours talking about that team and probably pissing off a lot of people oh, yeah. in the process. I will <laughs> say, though, my favorite Yankee of all time isn't because he's one of the best players of all time, but mm -hmm. going back a handful of years before Mattingly became a star, Willie Randolph played second base for the oh, Yankees nice. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was because, you know, a lot of kids, they'll say they – grew up dreaming of being center fielder for the New York Yankees or whatever. Well, I grew up dreaming of being the second baseman for the New York Yankees. So I always wanted to be like Willie Randolph. So for that reason, Willie. he's my favorite player. But like I said, we got to get off the Yankees. because Again, like another dude that was on some of those 80s teams. He was an older guy by that point, but he yeah. was still, he's still able to play, man. Like, it's too bad. You and I could probably go for about like three hours about the Yankees between oh. 1984 and 1989. Easily, <laughs> easily, you know, speaking of older players, but they could still play some actual Bills related news, I, I suppose. We'll tie the Bills in there just because he was talked about so much potentially going to the Buffalo Bills. But DeAndre Hopkins, finally, that saga is over. He is now um, with the Tennessee Titans. He signed a two year, $26 million deal that could go up to $32 million. Um. A mixed reaction, as expected, as always, I guess, from fans. Uh, a lot of people are saying, good for you, man. You know, get that money. This is, mm -hmm. the, you know, this is a league where other than guaranteed money, it's the one major sport where nothing's guaranteed except for what's guaranteed in your contract. And that's it. Right. So get that money while you can. I get that angle. A lot of other people are being critical because he spent a lot of time talking about things that he was looking for with the team. You know, the best chance to to win a ring, you know, weak defense, good quarterback, this and that. Tennessee Titans ain't got none of that shit at all. But he signs with them because quite I mean, it's pretty obvious, Joe. There's that's not a secret. They far and away offered him the most money. That's the only thing oh, yeah. that's a reasonable explanation to come up. But anyway, what's your take on Hopkins going to Tennessee? Do you if you well, you know, it's so easy to say, well, I wouldn't do that about him. You know, you're not leaving. The difference between maybe three million a year and fifteen million a year, and you know, on, on the table, you're talking ten to twelve million dollars. Who's leaving that on the table? What's your thoughts on him? Basically, that's my long-winded question for you right now. I, I I'm always in the mind get paid. You know, yeah. there's, I mean, there's some loyalty in sports. Sometimes you want to win, you know, win with the guys. But football, man, football is so football's so tough because you know contracts aren't guaranteed. Some teams going to be like, hey, we're going to drop twelve million on a year. 12 million a year on you guaranteed. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, hey, we might only win six games next year. Pfft, whatever. I'm getting paid. Cool. Like, and I know some people will be like, oh, you gotta you want to win a title. You want to do that. And I'm like, well, it's not like DeAndre Hopkins is gonna take downs off. It's not like he's gonna take plays off and just be, you know, just go screw off and say, you know, oh, whatever, I'm getting paid, man. I well, I can't say he won't do that. I mean, maybe he would. I I it's, do anything you want if you got the guaranteed money, but um, but he's a guy who's prided himself and he's played on a lot of stinker Cardinals teams too. So I mean, it's you know going to a mediocre football team is nothing new for him. But it's not, <laughs> it's, which is too bad. Good take because it's not. You're right. It's, um, I mean, it's I mean, like, but like he could have. I mean, I guess he could have signed in Miami. He could have signed. I mean, I know New England was hot for him, but like you know, catching balls from Mac Jones and kind of sucks, but. You know, I don't know, maybe the Ravens kick in there. Kansas City's always lurking. Like, if you really want a title, you take take $800,000 from the Chiefs and be like, all right, man, I'm in. Like, you know, or, you know, take a million from the Bills and be like, all right, dude, let's rock. Let's see if we can do this. If you're the Buffalo Bills, you look at the contract now, do, do you stay away from that contract, the player at his age? If you're Brandon Bean, is he worth that? Do you give him that kind of money? Mm. I, it's a lot, I, man. It's It's a lot. It's what what he got, what two years? Two years, 26 million up to 32. I'm not sure what's exactly guaranteed, to be honest with you, in that contract. I, I got yeah, I gotta look it up now. It's that's, well, that's while you're look while you're looking it up, let me follow this up too, because I got a thought on the Titans. <clears throat> I don't give you know, I don't blame DeAndre for getting paid at all. So I, I share that view with you. Get paid while you can, especially in the NFL of any league. Um I will say this though, like what are the Tennessee Titans doing? Like it looked to me like they were getting ready to tank for Caleb Williams. And now they signed DeAndre. Is DeAndre Hopkins going to win you the division? Are the Tennessee Titans going to win the division? Like I, I think their thinking is that they're in a pretty weak division overall. You know, Houston Texans really aren't going anywhere yet. 
Um, the Indianapolis Colts, they were probably going to have a rookie quarterback, and they stunk last year. Mm-hmm. Jacksonville's made the playoffs last year, and they're the, the, the big-time favorite in that division. But, you know, it's going to take a little more convincing to, to, to prove that the Jacksonville Jaguars are for real. Certainly got to tell them. But anyway, do the Titans think that they're going to – is this the kind of move that wins you a division? Because otherwise, why do you go out and you sign DeAndre Hopkins if you got no chance to win your division? I just That doesn't make sense to me from a it's, Tennessee point of view. Yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, it's definitely weird. I, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's part of the thing because you know when I was down in Nashville, I saw they they're already building the new stadium down there. Like mm-hmm. that's that's already well underway down there, which is bonkers because what Nissan Stadium is what twenty five years old. Like, okay, you need a new one, but they're they're putting a dome down there. I know Bills fans, I know they're putting a dome down there, but they want the Final Four, they want to get the Super Bowl, they want to do all this stuff. It's Nashville, like of course you can want to get all those events, but anyway. But you're doing all this stuff, but you got to prove to people that, like, hey, we're still trying here. We're still trying to get wins. We're, you know, all it takes is sure. Derek Henry to have another monster year and sell and not throw, not throw ten more interceptions or something like that. Like, Good there's point. talent there, but like, I mean, I, I guess the bar's set lower given the division that they're in because. I mean. Colts weren't very good, you know. Like Houston's awful. Like Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville should be really good, but like maybe they won't be. Like it's just it's too many variables. Like they could win the division very easily next season. You bring up a good point. You got to sell tickets too. You know, I remember going back to when the Bills stunk and uh, they signed Terrell Owens. They weren't winning shit with him, but yeah. he's going to move some tickets. You know, so mm-hmm. from a marketing standpoint, it certainly makes sense. And to the Buffalo Bills fans. Which, to fairness, I don't want to necessarily signal them out because I would say Kansas City and probably any other team that he was rumored to go to, those fans were imagining him in that uniform. Like, oh, if you get John Drew Hopkins, it's over. Forget about it. Who are you going to double team? You're going to double team Hopkins? You're going to double team Stephon Diggs? You're going to let, you know, Gabe Davis? No one's even going to be looking at him. He got two good tight ends, blah, 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 this and that. All this before he signs. Once he signs, oh, I would have never paid him that. Guy's old. He's washed. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It's Which again? Sour grapes. It's always. It's not just Bills fans, but I only pay attention to Bills fans. So you right. know what I'm saying. It's everybody. Like, <laughs> it's it's just funny how a really good player doesn't sign with your team and quickly, you know, he he's washed. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. I looked it up. They don't. They uh, spot track didn't have the guaranteed money listed yet. So I guess that stuff hasn't come out yet. But, um, but I'm looking at their depth chart. Yeah, mm-hmm. DeAndre Hopkins is their number one with a bullet, man. Like, <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, like Traylon Burks, Nick Westbrook, like you know, Oconquo is their tight end. He's he's okay, I guess. But like, that's a team built for Derrick Henry. Like, that's that's what they have been, and that's what they are. But now they have now there's somebody for Tannehill to hit with one of his eight yard underneath passes to maybe break one. Yeah, they Julie or Julio Jones, a you know, kind of similar deal. Long, uh, you know, distinguished career at Atlanta, goes to Tennessee, he's not the same player anymore. Maybe that's it with DeAndre. I don't know. To me, last take on him. If, if you're a Bills fan, I don't think it was ever realistic for him to come here. He was talking a lot about it. Media was talking a lot about it. Fans were talking a lot about it. And to be fair, Vaughn Miller, who is a great player and I'm sure a great human being, but don't listen to Vaughn Miller anymore because he's full of shit. He's full of shit, dude. I, you know, ODB, Beckham's coming here. Um, you know, DeAndre's coming here. He's going to play in week one. By the way, if he's the one saying that, you can count on Vaughn Miller not being in the lineup for week <laughs> one. I love Vaughn Miller. I'm very happy he's a Buffalo Bill. I mean, come on, though. He's stop just, with these predictions, man. He's been wrong literally every time. I'm just waiting for him to start to start with Saquon Barkley now or uh, Josh Jacobs would be like, put out some like <laughs> thing on Instagram with the eyeball emoji with like adding those players being like, come on, man. Like, let's go. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but Dude, any none of that's happening. No, but anyway, to my point, if you're a Bills fan, realistically, the best thing that could happen if you're not going to sign DeAndre Hopkins is that he did not sign with the Kansas City Chiefs because I think you put him on the Kansas City Chiefs with Pam Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, that's a hell of a lot of trouble that you don't want. So yeah. good on the Chiefs for not paying him. Again, maybe, you know, they these guys, you know, they're, they're scouting departments. They see things that fans in, in – 
media don't. So it's, they, yeah, and it's not just they, Kansas City too. I mean, AFC is still going to be a murder, murder sure, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season. Sure. So I, good. It's not Kansas for Buffalo, anyways. Good. It's not Kansas City. Good. It's not Cincinnati. Good. It's not Miami. Good. It's not the Jets. You know, any of these uh, Jets. Uh, hmm. We're going to talk know. about them in a few. I don't know, man, but. You know, any team in the division, basically, just be happy. We didn't go there or with any of your direct competitors. If it's Tennessee, whatever. If they get in the playoffs, deal with them then. All right, I am back with Joe Yernan from Noted Hockey, Main and State Podcast. We should report. Let's play a little game that we have not done before on this show. It's going to be called Agree or Disagree. I talked about this a little bit at the top. Simply put, I'm going to give you a take and you're going to tell me if you agree with it or if you disagree with it and kind of like a brief explanation as to why. Pretty uh, self-explanatory stuff here, folks. Let's go. All right. Start with the Sabres. I'm going to talk a little bit of Sabres here, man. Okay. Um, Sabres opening night. Owen Power is paired with Eric Johnson. Agree or disagree? I'm leaning agree here. Um, and it's, it's, I'm only half agreeing because I, what Don Granado said to us after at the end of development camp told me that he's going to be playing with a lot of pairs during, during camp and during preseason. I mean, well, at least it's the way it seems now in the middle of July, you know, mm-hmm. things might, things might change once they step on the ice in September, but, um, but it sounds like he might be tinkering with stuff just to get some looks to, to see if something else can, can shake loose. And, uh, to me, Clifton's the guy that will eventually be with power. But I think to start, I think Johnson will be the guy to start because they, I think they want him to kind of set the example, set the standard and, you know, pr- be a veteran guide to go with him because, you know, he, he, Eric Johnson knows the job. He knows how to do it. And I think last season it was so much freelance from, from Henry Yoki Haru playing next to power. The power is just kind of like, oh man, like, <laughs> Like sometimes I'm pinching in and Henry's right next to me and I'm like, well, what do we do? What are we both doing here? Or, you know, he's playing a puck along the boards and Henry's standing behind him. And it's like, well, if you're here, who's over there that, you know, it's one of those kinds of things. But, um, but I, I, I lean, yes, I lean, yes, to say that he'll be there to start, but I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't see it being a full season long thing, but I don't know, man, we, I, he might be next to Darlene. Honestly, like there, there might be some, there might be all kinds of wacky stuff going on. <laughs> all right. Well, let's stick with Owen Power here for the next one. Agree or disagree? Owen Power, and this is before the season starts. Owen Power signs a bridge deal, not a long term contract with the Buffalo Sabres. Agree. That's a strong agree, too. Yeah. Um, I, I think they go bridge, and I think it's going to be something similar to what Darlene signed. And it, it'll be a different, it'll be a different thing. Uh, compared to Darlene. Darlene, Darlene's was kind of like a, all right, man, you've been kind of shitty lately. So here's <laughs> 6 million a year, just to you know, kind of motivate you to get it back going. Because if you're really good, you'll get a lot more than that on the backside of it. So uh, in Power's case, I think it's just kind of a, uh, well, here's, here's a head start on things. Uh, when this, when this bridge deal runs out, we'll, we'll reconvene and get you done for eight years. However much. Uh, I don't think they get it they do long-term this summer because I don't think you want in eight years time to have Darlene and power both coming up for coming up at the end of their contracts again, because I mean, Darlene will be what 32. Oh my God. Oh God. It's this the time thing, Pat, Jesus okay. Christ. I forgive the blasphemy and everything, but like, Oh my God. Like how old he's going to be eight years. I'll be 31. <sighs> It's depressing. It's depressing. I've known a kid. So known the guy since he's 18 for God's sake. But, but I mean, you're talking about him being 31 and then power will be 28, you know, and you're talking about a guy that's probably been through and into the heart of his prime years. So having both of those guys come up for big money is probably not the greatest idea, even though, you know, Darlene would, you know, given how age curves go nowadays, Darlene might be on the back side, you know, coming down the hill. I don't know, man. I, he might he might play till he's forty five. I mean, who knows? But, um, but yeah, I I still would not want to run up against that. That's that's asking that's asking for some really tough decisions in eight. Well, I mean, it's eight years down the road, and I 
the way things go in hockey, it'd be very doubtful that both you know, everybody will still be here in eight years. But um, yeah, it's it'll be a bridge, and I people might get upset that it won't be long term, but don't. It's it's for a good reason. Real quick detour from agree or disagree. Based on what you just said, I'm sure there's some people who might be wondering a little bit, but quickly, or Rasmus Dahlin is not officially confirmed and signed to no. a, to a long term deal. It's as going to happen record, soon, as of this right? recording. No, he's not. <laughs> All right, so it's important. You kind of answered my question right there because you were literally saying, as of this recording, he has not been announced for a, a long-term deal, but it's obviously it is happening. It's just a matter of when it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know our pal Chad was, was talking a few weeks ago about how like, yeah, it's basically done. Wrap it up, which I, it's, yeah, listen, it's, it's probably basically done. Let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Uh, it's just, it's summertime. There's no need to rush any of this. Honestly, sure. like, everybody can go on vacation. Everybody can go have fun. I know darlene has been on vacation. His Instagram gives that away, but you know, I'm sure Kevin Adams and the rest of the staff would be, would be happy to escape, escape the office for a little while, do some other things. They could honestly get this, get this extension signed the day before camp starts or the day camp opens in September. And it's still the same thing. It's, well, it, I mean, he's still under contract this year. It's just about getting a, getting ahead and just getting it taken care of for the future. So, well, uh, yeah, you're right. And I just wanted to, 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 to say that on this show, because, you know, when you and Lance do, you know, your hockey podcast, mm -hmm. you, most of your listeners are more diehard Sabre fans where I feel like the majority, not all, but the majority of people listening are probably more on the Bills side than the Sabres fans. There's probably a lot more Sabre, casual Sabres fans that might be watching it. So it was just important yeah. for me to let you, uh, to have you let them know that anyway. All right. So let's keep going here. Matt Savoy, this is the next one. Agree or disagree? Matt Savoy is on the Buffalo Sabres opening night roster. Mm. These are good ones, by the way. It good, is. Good, good job, Patrick. This, yeah, this this is what I've I started thinking about it when he when he came in for the AHL playoffs. Like, how's this gonna work next year? Because he, he's he's in limbo. Um for for those that don't know, uh, he's not old enough to play in the AHL next season. He has to go back to juniors if he's not playing in the NHL, which is, you know, that's that's part of the agreement the uh, the CHL, the Canadian Hockey League, has with the mm -hmm. NHL to make sure they can still have their junior players that are really good and they can you know they can make money off that. Um, but his his he's like one day one day too young to to do it, <laughs> which is nuts. Like if he was born twenty four hours sooner, he's 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 gonna be right. either in Buffalo or Rochester next season, but instead, this, it's this, this is the way. He, I think, with Quinn going down and be he'll be out till December, January. Uh, I, I think, I think he's got a very good chance of doing it. I, I, I kind of agree, but it kind it, it puts them in the position of possibly. Man, trying to manage his ice, you know, his games, not the ice time so much, but just the games played. Um, because I think it's, uh, I don't know if they have to worry about uh, his ELC kicking in with nine. I think they do. Yeah, no, yeah, the, you know, they definitely have to worry about that. So once, once he plays nine games, his ELC kicks in, he's his first year of his contract officially kicks in. If he plays yeah. less than that, it doesn't, it'll slide to the next year, which is advantageous for the teams, not great for the player because it's, you know, it has to do with all the, you know, uh, time, time, you know, time played for the PA purposes, but, um, but they might have to play around with that. Uh, Shane Wright with the Seattle Kraken had this, w went through this last year. Yeah. He ended up playing 30 some games with Seattle, uh, which, you know, kicked in his contract, but it, it, there's something about like playing 40 games or something where it's, it's a different type of deal. I forget. People will very eagerly correct me on this, but, it, it's another bit of paperwork. Let's put it that way. And he was playing, you know, scratch in and out of the lineup and basically was biding time until it was time for world juniors, which he would play for team Canada and that whole thing. Matt Savoy's probably going to play for team Canada this year. He wasn't on the team this past year, which is bonkers, but he'll be, he should be the first guy on the team this upcoming season. But, um, but if he's in the NHL, probably not going to be. So, um, I, I, I think they, 
I think they want to see more from him. And I think honestly, they want to see him play with Zach Benson a little bit more. I mean, they've seen enough of them together already in Winnipeg in the WHL. So I don't know. It's, it's awfully, it's awfully nice to have two of your top picks play together. <laughs> it's, yeah. really, it's really a nice thing, but I, I wonder if they view those, those guys sticking together and just lighting up the entire league for one more year is, is a good thing. Or if maybe it's, it's going to kind of stunt things for, for Benson and having him learn at the NHL level is a better thing, or excuse me, for Savoy to have him learn at the NHL level because you want him to get the AHL experience, but he can't get it. So right. NHL is the next best thing. It's, it's just that the NHL is a massive step forward from the AHL. So I don't know. I'm I'm torn on it. I know it's agree or disagree. I can't do either. On that. <laughs> That's on fair. I, That's I, fair. I, I hate being a waffler, man, but like, <laughs> That's fair. I, I, I can I can see nine, 90 reasons for them to do it and 90 reasons for them to not do it. So look, yeah. man, not everything's cut and dry when you when you do stuff no. like this. Um, agree or disagree, Victor Olofsson will be on the Buffalo Sabres opening night roster. A lot of people thought he's gonna be traded, hasn't happened. You got Jack Quinn down now, but you still mm-hmm. could trade him because you got Kulik, you got other guys who might you know take that step up. Anyway, agree or disagree. Uh, Victor Olofsson opening up. You you agree? I, I, I stepped on your toes there, Pat. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. Go ahead. No, I agree. Uh, Quinn's injury is what really opens that up. Um, I think that kind of cooled them on doing trade talks. I think Olofsson's contract also helped with that because it's four. It's over four million dollars. That's a tough cap hit for most of the league to take on without taking some money back or you know some player you probably don't want back or whatever the deal is. Um, the, I, I hope the end of the season was the wake up call for him to be like, Hey man, get your even strength game together. Because if you don't dude, you're going to be sitting out a lot. Um, but like, you can't just sit out. You can't just go into the season and think like, well, we got tw- a guy who scored 28 goals here. Meh, whatever, stick him on the bench. Uh, we'll play these kids that are really good. They're going to be really good, but we don't know what they're going to produce yet. And so it's, it's the, it's the, what might be versus the maybe sure thing. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of his goals were kind of, you know, kind of gimmies last year, but um, it's still 28 goals and yeah, Sabres can score enough to kind of make up for it. They can certainly do that, but still you're talking almost 30 goals out of your lineup. You don't, you don't sacrifice that without there being a problem, especially when you're losing a 20 goal score already for half the year. And a, guy who was probably going to score 30 or 40 if you ask me but um so yeah so I, I i don't see how you can cut cut him out trade him whatever unless you're getting somebody who can bring that kind of offense in return or sign somebody if i, I asked you, if i asked you that same exact question a couple of weeks ago before jack Quinn got hurt would your answer be different oh 100 yeah. percent. i would have I, <laughs> I would have said he'd be traded by the end of uh by the end of the uh, seventh round of the draft. That's, that's what I would have said, uh, honestly, but, um, but yeah, the, the injury changes that whole perspective because again, listen, Kulik's great. Rosane's great. Uh, Savoy's great. Benson's going to be great. Like those are the, those are probably the first four. Well, you know, Lucas Rusek could be the guy. Um, yeah. You know, Linus Weiss back. If things go really crazy, you know, you're talking about guys, you have enough guys there to kind of fill that spot you have enough guys to at least compete for one spot for two it's too risky it's too risky to 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 just subtract that much offense from your lineup and hope that it stays the same because defending defending the against them gets a little bit easier when when you take out that much that much skill sure and look at this point it feels like with olofsson he is what he is he's the type of player i don't think he's going to change much if he you know what he doesn't do well on five on five is probably not going to change you got to hope that the ups are, you know, a little more consistent or frequent, I should say, uh, than mm-hmm. the downs. Just the way it is. I, I think I agree with you because of Quinn. Um, I don't think he'll be long for this franchise, though. I could see him getting traded maybe for the trade deadline. Yep. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, let's yep. piss a couple people off because no matter what you agree <laughs> or disagree, this is obviously oh, definitely yeah. going to piss people off. It's a polarizing topic here. In hindsight, a year later, you have a healthy. Jack Eichel, the Jack Eichel that we saw playing for Vegas at the end of the season and into the playoffs. Okay. You got that Jack Eichel, not 
fucked up that Jack Eichel that hated his life and didn't want to be here. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. You got Jack Eichel. You're Kevin Adams right now. In hindsight, if Jack Eichel was on your roster right now and Vegas was offering you Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, uh, Noah Oslin in a second round pick, if you're Kevin Adams, agree or disagree, you make that trade again. Hmm. This is tricky because you're talking about, uh, I, I'm assuming here, you're talking about an Eichel that never hurts his neck. Like he's, well, no, well, he's what he's he is. Healthy. Or are you talking about just strictly the guy that we just we saw in Vegas this season? Strictly the guy that we saw in Vegas this season. Okay. But he instead of being in Vegas, he got healthy. Even if he didn't play, he's just, he's healthy Jack Eichel now, not, mm-hmm. you know, um, injured Jack Eichel. Right. Would you still, okay. I guess what I'm saying would you trade him still for that haul that they got back? Agree or disagree on that? I would. In hindsight. I, I, I would. With him having the injury and having it being repaired and all that, despite of how great he looked, I'm still mm-hmm. doing that. I'm still doing that trade 100%. Because mm-hmm. everything else that you got is is immense. Like, that's an... Um, when we look back at this trade, people are going to are gonna look back at it and go, it's like, geez, I don't know who really won that one, but yeah, I mean, I, it's going to be the O'Reilly thing all over again. And people will be like, well, they came out better on that. I'm like, yeah, but St. Louis got a Stanley cup. Vegas got a Stanley cup. So exactly. that's, that's the point. Like that's the whole point. You, you get that guy. Um, so, yeah, but I still, I think I still make that trade because the, the, sum of the parts that they got are so good. Sure. They're so good. Tuck's so good. Krebs is good. I mean, I don't think we've seen the best of Krebs yet. And Krebs is already pretty good. Um, you don't even talk about Oslin because yeah. of all the other prospects. I mean, right. And like, first round uh, pick from two years ago. Right. And Oslin, we don't, we, we haven't talked about him a lot because he's, you know, it's kind of, you know, sight unseen, really. He's, you know, sure. he's playing in Sweden and he's playing well. But, you know, until he's over here, it's, you know, as, as uh, xenophobic as it sounds or homerific as it sounds, it's like, it doesn't matter until he's over here. Sure. Like, if he stays over there forever, whatever, who cares? It doesn't matter. But, um, but like, but those three parts are huge. And two of them are already major contributors at the NHL level. One's, I mean, Jesus, Tuck's again, Tuck's amazing. Krebs has a ton of skill and he plays like a bulldog on defensively. So like that's everything you could, that you could want out of that. And if Oslin turns into like a future number two center, <laughs> Okay. Sure. Cool. That's awesome too. Like that for all those three things for for Jack for how good he was. And like I know some people they only hate watched him last year. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I, trust me. I get it. Yeah. Uh, but he had. But he. I mean, he was almost a point of game player last year. Uh, and he still was dealing with some injury stuff. Like there was a couple of things that kept him out. But we're talking like I'm looking at the numbers right now. Like he, he's. You know, the, the goal scoring, not as good as that last season. With, well, the second to last, 1920. That was, that to me was Jack's best season by far. And stupid COVID got in the way of it. And, you know, he, Jack still got MVP votes. That's that, that, you know, that award season. So, like, he was really good. You know, 1.15 points per game. Jesus Christ, that's good. But, you know, if, if he turns back into that guy next season for Vegas, well, Okay, we we might have to revisit this question again, especially if Vegas goes back to the Stanley Cup and wins again, because then you're talking about a two-time Stanley Cup winner, a guy who's won it two times, you know, two years in a row and was a major factor in all of that. And then you're like, I don't know, that seems pretty good. So I don't know. You have to get to the playoffs. That's the thing. Sabres have to get to the playoffs. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, sure, cool sure. this, to cool this kind of discussion down. I look, I agree with you agreeing. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I, and I'm also glad you said something and, and thank you for saying it too. No matter, look, Alex Tuck might be the, the, the a future captain of this team. Um, mm-hmm. Peyton Krebs might be a dominant bottom six forward. Oslin might become something really good in the NHL. No matter what happens, if you're the Vegas Golden Knights, you Jack Eichel helped you win a Stanley Cup and you operate a franchise in any sport with the goal of winning a championship. They literally did that. Yep. So, you know, this could, if you're the Sabres, yes, I make that trade still as well. But if you're, you, you didn't fleece the Vegas Knights, no. they got Jack Eichel and he helped them win a Stanley cup already. And it's not like he's some old washed up veteran. Who's going to no. ride off to the sunset. They no. very well might win multiple Stanley cups with yep. Jack Eichel being a key part of it. 
So if you're Vegas, you make the trade as well. If I asked you if you were Vegas, I think you would say I would do it as well if you were the Vegas Knights. I I think you would anyway. Absolutely. I mean, Eichel was Eichel was 26 this past season. Like yeah. that's still young. Like this is these are the prime years. Like these are the absolute prime years right now. Yeah. And even still, like people picked on him for not scoring a goal in the Stanley Cup final. Cool. He had 26 points in 22 games in the playoffs, guys. Like yeah. if you set up other goals, those are still goals. So people are always gonna hate him. Six goals, 20 assists in the playoffs, dude. Come on. <laughs> Come him, on, let's, him get, let's get real. Him winning the cup elevated the the level of hatred, unreasonable hatred for them for, to a certain extent, unreasonable hatred that Buffalo fans are always going to have for him. It's just yeah. it's as simple as that, man. I um, I, I was talking about this with uh, who was I talking? I was just talking about this with with Boomer on Sirius XM about how uh, the the soreness that a lot of Sabres fans feel about the, you know how the playoffs turn out. It's it's Eichel winning it, yes. But it's also the fact that he played against Reinhardt in the final. Like those sure. are the two guys that were supposed to to That's bring Buffalo to that point, and now they're playing for other teams. One of them within your division, and they're playing. They, they're playing for the Stanley Cup. So, yeah, you, you, you know, see, a, you, you look back and you see a young Jack and a young Sam in Buffalo, and you're like, you know, five years from now, these guys are going to be competing for Stanley Cup. You sign up for that. You right. don't know that one's going to be on Vegas. That one's going to be on. Uh, Florida. Anyway, yeah. let's- and I go, I go, I just had to look it up because I, I was like, 26 points. That's a lot. Who's the leading scorer of the playoffs? And everybody would be like, well, Leon Dreyse. I was like, yeah, well, they lost. So <laughs> that's fucking bad. <laughs> cool. He had a bunch of points in two two rounds. Awesome. Neat. Let's switch, let's switch gears here for uh, a couple questions here. Agree or disagree? The Buffalo Bills, pretty straightforward here. The Buffalo Bills will win the AFC East again in 2023. Agree. Yeah, I I don't think anybody else is on their is on their par, and I know there's questions. There's there's much bigger questions this year uh, with Buffalo than than I think there were last year. I think last year was last year was was kind of the year where it's like okay, shake off that really bad loss to Kansas City and come out and just sure beat, beat the piss out of everybody and and roll to the Super Bowl. Big time favorites last didn't, year didn't happen. You know, it's, things happen. Goofball shit happened. Just all sorts of just you know bad vibes, nonsense. But um, I don't see. Re- I mean, Miami got a little better. Uh, the Jets got better. New England is <sighs> still the same stupid team, but they still have the same great coach. So <laughs> the same great coach has taken a bad team. Hopkins going to help and close to the playoffs. So I they'll win the East. It's not. I don't think it's going to be as fun to win it <laughs> this year as it was maybe in the past. I know last year it got a little bit anxious later in the sure. season. But, um, I, I think it's going to be a bit more of a fight this year. Um, you know, mm-hmm. if Tua stays healthy. Miami's Miami could be a could be a real pain. Um, and you know, as much as they dislike him, Rogers going to the Jets and bringing all his buddies along with him. Well, the Jets' offense is what held them back last year. The defense was pretty damn good, so that makes it a little tricky. So that's it makes things a little bit more color color tug. Just like I don't know, but the Bills to me still have the most talent all around. They they still have the best offense. Um, they I think they still have the best defense. There's questions, obviously. You don't know how Hyde's going to return. You know how well Hyde's going to play. You know Hamlin coming back's going to be awesome when he you know when he's ready to play. Um, Trey White, I want to see what he looks like this, you know, a year after ACL. Like I know mm-hmm. he came back midway last year and it didn't quite well, look like himself, when he wasn't in, he wasn't himself. But yeah, okay. so like, I want to see the way he looks because that makes it I mean secondary ever is secondary has to be on point in the NFL now. Like you cannot have you cannot have just like a corner and a safety and be run, running out there with a couple of bums. You got to be good all over the place because it's, everybody's everybody's throwing the ball. So, um, but they're I don't know the front seven. It's a little, it's a little I don't know. Like there's questions. I, I'm not going to say that it's bad, but I'm just saying there's, there's there's a lot of questions that need answering, and they better get the answers pretty quick. I, you're right, and obviously I agree with you as well. I do think it's. Uh... Miami and the Jets are certainly dangerous. They're, they're capable teams for sure this year. You know, the Jets mm-hmm. were average quarterback play away from probably being in the playoffs last year. I think yep. Miami absolutely makes the playoffs if Tua doesn't get hurt twice. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, and they added to their defense. But anyway, I, I agree with you there, which leads to this. All right. So we both agree the Bills will win their division again. Agree or disagree? If the Bills can't get past a divisional round for a third straight year, is it fair to call this team overrated? Um, I think it's I think it's fair, but I think it's the wrong word. I I, I I agree that 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 it's that it's that you can say that. I think it's the wrong word. Um, I there, there are harsher words that come to mind. Really, um, joke artists, gaggers, posers, posers, pretenders. Like last okay. year, like I remember last year when Minnesota was was winning all these games last year, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, Vikings gonna run away with the NBC." And I'm sure. like, "They're fake." They're yeah. bums. They're not going to do anything. Who was right? I was because I watched those idiots play twice a year and they stink. So, but like, if you got a team that just can't either it's in their heads or whatever the deal is, if they can't get past it, the excuses run dry. It's like the Super Bowl run, you know? Yeah. You lose the first one. Ah, it sucks. It's horrible, brutal. Like, you know, try to get back next year. Well, they got back next year. Then, Ran into a buzzsaw team with Washington. Like, okay, that sucks. That's it's really tough. They could have hung with them, but like, you know, things you know things go things go wrong. And then you know the two games against Dallas. Like, what you know at that point, it's kind of like, oh, Jesus, guys, just win one, please. And then I think by the fourth one, it was like, okay, don't get embarrassed this year, okay? If you if you don't mind, like it's it it you you can't come up short like that again. Get to the get to the title game at least. Like to me, that's. That's the the base goal is to get to the AFC title game from Buffalo. Agreed. Like, winning the division, whoop de doo doesn't like. Okay, great, cool. You know, let's make sure we get home field, and and, and run with it through the playoffs at that point, uh, which will be really tough to do. But do it, and you could probably run to the Super Bowl because coming here is no fun for anybody. Like that's just that's Agreed. just a hard it's a hard ass place to play. But I mean. If you're bowing out in the division round, I don't care if the teams are hot. I don't care if, you know, if, you know, you know, run up against, I don't know, Cincinnati in the second round somehow, like, you know, say Baltimore wins the division and oops, the Bengals are right there. And then they start doing their stuff. But, you know, I, that stuff rings hollow for me because in, in situations like that, it's like, okay, you're playing a team that stunk all year, but oh, they figured it out. Like, what they do, beat them. Okay. Like, that's, you're the better team, beat them. Like, that, I, that's, that's where <laughs> I think I've said that for the last two years. You're the better team. Just win. You're you're better than them. Just do the right thing. The the, the Buffalo Bills are at a um, they're at a place right now where there's there's no more excuses. You know, two years ago was a fluke. They did ever look. We saw between the New England first round game and that Kansas City divisional. I, I in my opinion, to this day, still some of maybe even arguably the best quarterback play I've ever seen in my life from Josh Allen in, the, in those playoffs. Those two games. It was a fluke. They were 13 seconds away from, from beating the Chiefs. It, there's just It's inexcusable to lose. I don't want you want to go down that road right now. Right. Anyway, there's your excuse. A fluke. They Maybe they weren't quite ready yet. Whatever. A miscommunication. Last year, your, the excuse was, well, a lot of it's legitimate, man. I mean, this team had an unworldly amount of injuries last year. The DeMar Hamlin stuff, the guy almost died on the field. That affects you emotionally. Yep. The weather extremities a couple times, not as much of an excuse, but it's there. Anyway, if you want to make up excuses, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I don't agree with it, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. This year, there ain't no excuses. No. You've been through everything. You know what it takes. You got your quarterback going into his sixth year. You got a wide receiver who, they, if things go left early in the year, who knows how he's going to react to it. But you got all the talent in the world. You're going to have Vaughn Miller back. You got a healthy Trey White back. You got Boyer. You got Hyde back after not playing pretty much all of last year. Milano is one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Still all over the place. Good right. draft, allegedly. You know, we'll, what, we'll, well see. Well, I say allegedly because <laughs> you got to see. You got to see with your eyes, you know, mm -hmm. seeing it on paper and seeing them on the field. Two different things. Anyway, my point is this Are they in a loaded conference with a lot of talent? Yes. I don't give a shit. There's no excuses. No more excuses this year for the Bills. To me, if you can't get out of the, the second round of the playoffs, it's time to question whether you have the right head coach or the right personnel mm -hmm. or the right GM or something that will ever give you over to hump. So yeah. I yeah. agree. To me, they're overrated. I, 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 it's fair to call them overrated. And even furthermore, you're going to hear some Josh Allen overrated shit from national people, at least anyway, 
if he can't get them past the first round. Yeah, I, well, I I'm not saying it's right, but you're well, gonna hear it. Right, I mean, you'll you'll hear it. It may not be uh, at all factual, but you'll you'll hear sure. somebody somebody will hot take that and run with it and get beat up by by Bills Mafia online for for yeah. saying it. Oh, of course, but I mean, uh, some folks were were bristling at the the idea that McDermott could be on the hot seat, and you know he gets the extension. Everybody's like, oh, see, not on the hot seat. I'm like, I don't know, man. If they freaking lose in the second round again, like. You got to start asking a lot of hard questions to your coach because it's like, yes, what, what's, what are we doing wrong here? Like, what, what's the problem? Like, what's the problem and how do we fix it? Because holy shit, guys, let's go. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. It's he'll get questioned. He ain't, uh, he ain't on no he hates seat. getting questioned. I know that much. He but. ain't getting fired. <laughs> I don't care. It would have to be like epically a disastrous season for McDermott to even potentially get fired. I just, mm -hmm. I don't see it happening. Anyway, my point was, I agree with you. Your, you say overrated is not the right word, and you would use stronger mm -hmm. words. I I agree with what you said, so <laughs> we're on the same page there. Two more of these, and we'll get it out. Um, agree or disagree? The NFC East is better than the AFC East. Disagree. You disagree? Disagree. I, I know the NFC East was a shockingly decent-looking division last year. Mm -hmm. How bad was the NFC in general? Low. Like I, the NFC was pretty friggin' bad, man. Yeah, it was. I, still, I mean, still is compared to the AFC. I mean, I mean, both conferences. The South was was awful, and you know, I, I don't know what Washington. I don't. I didn't. I know so much of that. What they did seemed to be, in, despite all of their problems. So, like, hey, mm -hmm. good for them. Like they hulked up a little bit. That's that's good on them. The Giants. I don't know, man. Dayball, Dayball's a magician. So <laughs> who knows? I don't they they could they could end up winning 12 games next season. They can end up winning seven. Uh, like that's that's the the kind of range I, I look with them because it's just so fraught with like questions. Cause I mean, I don't I'm not buying on Daniel Jones yet, man. Like that's one year. Okay, cool. Like you got the guy, you got the smart offensive guy to to coach your to coach your quarterback. That's the right, that was the right move you needed. You needed to not have whatever dumbass they had there calling these idiot plays for him before. So, um, and then like the Cowboys, you'll never convince me. The Cowboys are have it. <laughs> it's just, they, they cool. They'll win 12, 13 games. Neat. Okay. Maybe they win the division. That's cool. They're going to lose to whoever they're playing. <laughs> they're playing in the playoffs uh, at some point. And it'll probably be some loser ass. They'll end up playing like the saints or something. In the first round, I end up going out and be like, wow, this is a shocking turn of events. I'm like, have you watched Dallas for the last 20 years, man? Like, come on. That's what they are. The Eagles are the scary team. The Eagles are terrifying as far as I'm concerned, man. Like, that's I, I don't think Kansas City exposed them by any means in the Super Bowl. I I I, I have a hard time going against Jalen Hurts and, and what they've got assembled there because they seem to just add a few more guys this offseason and be like, well, we ain't let, we ain't gonna lose the Super Bowl next year. So I don't know. It, it's it's top heavy. The Eagles, I mean, I'll give the Cowboys credit. They win the games at least. And you know, Prescott's I don't know, Prescott's an okay quarterback. Uh, he's he's too hot and cold for me. But when I take him to Detroit, yeah, probably. But that's an that's a whole other story. But um but the Giants and, and Washington just too sketchy for me. And I know the same thing can be said, but said about the AFC East, like New England and the Jets. Like I get it. Even Miami, you can question it, but I just see the way three of those four teams loaded up in this off season. And I, we got a pretty good idea of what Miami can do last season, you know, provided they don't treat Tua like a moron uh, again. And the Jets went out and got Rogers, which, Unfortunately, unfortunately, reputation precedes them. So you have to give them some kind of edge there because the one thing they couldn't do was score points. And now they got a guy who that's all he does. So uh, I don't know. I'm going to exercise my right to do what you did with the Mets avoid thing and <laughs> tell you that I can't give you uh, an agree or disagree. I'll, I'll say this. My, my thought process is I think New England is slightly better than Washington. I think Dallas and the Giants, I have a, I have a higher opinion, I think, of the Giants than you do. Um, I, I give Dallas and Giants a slight edge, maybe even with Miami and the Jets. And then I this is gonna be unpopular. And some people ain't gonna like hearing this on talking Buffalo, you know, of all the podcast names they have out there. But I think the Philadelphia Eagles are a little bit better than the Buffalo Bills. Um, I think the Eagles 
you know, gun to my head right now, I might pick the Eagles to win the Super Bowl. I, I, I just not. Besides having great skill players, they also have an unbelievably good offensive and defensive line. They're so good in the trenches. Now, yeah, Kansas City, you know, made them look shitty in the Super Bowl. I get that. It's one game, though, man. Um, I think the Eagles are going to be hungry. I, I think they're going to be better. I, I would give the, the Eagles a slight edge over the Buffalo Bills. But you kind of convinced me, too, because, you know, Miami and the Jets, you could easily convince me that they're better than Dallas and the and the New York Giants. That's that's a tough one to see because like if Tua if Tua doesn't get his head smashed around twice last season, how many do the Dolphins win more games than nine? I would have, I, to, I have it, to think yes, right? He yeah yes. I, I tell you right now, if Tua is healthy and the Bills play the way they now, maybe the Bills step it up in the wild card round because. They're like, oh, shit, you know, we, we got to be scared of this guy. Maybe they were a little too overconfident against that third-string quarterback. I don't remember his goddamn name. But I'll tell you this, if the Bills played like they did in the wild card round, Miami would have beat them in Buffalo if Tua was healthy. I have no doubt about it. The they, way they were, they, they I think the they played too too overconfident when they played against Tua down in Miami. I, that, I get the heat was a whole thing for that day. Sure. Like, but, I mean – they you were can't, you can't so tell me they weren't going in there going to be like, this guy can't even throw a ball. Sure. Yeah. And then he's just lobbing up balls to Waddle and Hill, and they're doing their thing again. And they're like, oh, no. What do we do? And then Gasicki's getting open underneath. And you're like, oh, God. Yeah, my, look, I'm sure at some point, maybe before the season, I'll have you on again, and we'll talk more Miami. But they're good, and they're good on defense. They added Jalen Ramsey. They, have to, they added uh, David Long, a really good linebacker. They got some good young defensive players. Christian Wilkins is an animal at defensive tackle. He's what Bills fans wanted Ed Oliver to become. That's what Christian Wilkins is. Anyway, you know, I still like the Bills too. I still <laughs> agree with you right. that the Bills are going to win a division, but yes. it's going to be a fight. It's going yes. to be a fight. Last question, self-indulging here because you and I, well, not so much you as much recently because you're, you know, <laughs> your shit, you're busy. You had a lot of hockey stuff. You haven't watched a ton of wrestling that like you, you know, you normally dive in, but I'm going to ask you a wrestling one. That's how we'll wrap this up. AEW, agree or disagree? AEW is better than WWE right now. I I agree. And it's I don't know if it's mildly fanboy-ish of me to say that. I, I like the talent that they've got over there a little bit more. Um I I I think WWE with Reigns is awesome. Like everything they've done with him is incredible. I know that story the storyline is you know, the bloodline storylines over with for the most part. It's just kind of like tying up yeah. loose ends now, but I know it's, it, it's, it's lingering, but it's not what it, you know, like it's not what it was. It's not what it, was. it could still go some places, but yes, you're right. Go ahead. My bad. But yeah. But for, I mean, for the whole, it's basically like, you know, they, sure. they gotta, do, they gotta do something else. It's so, peaked. It's peaked. Right. And uh, you know, Cody Rhodes has been really good over there. Well, I, I cannot wait for him to go heel cause I can't stand him as a face drives me nuts seeing him as a face like dude just, I know, you want to be an asshole just just go for it already man like i could just see him being like the uh uh the uh oh, what the hell's his name the boys the um homelander like i could see cody rhodes going like american nightmare but being the homelander because people will cheer him even more when he goes heel i guarantee <laughs> that you could but, be right yeah but like i don't know like the i mean the women's the women's division is beyond superior to AEW. Be like light years ahead and they still run it wrong. <laughs> like but like the talent is so much better and they just they're done with it. That's basically WWE's thing. AEW they've got faults too. Like there are some things that they just, you know, kind of go nowhere a lot and they'll just kind of skip over it and be like, "All right, let's try this other thing." And there's a lot of like one-off matches. There's not a lot of there's not a ton of storyline building and the storyline building they do do takes years <laughs> i mean sure. so you know some of the uh the adam page stuff has been like callbacks to like stuff that happened like four years ago like it's like okay you know the samoa joe cm punk stuff like goes back to matches they had back in like what 2009 mm -hmm. like, i mean it's cool because it makes dopes like us that are like our age that watch this stuff when we were younger and it was cooler for us to watch it at that age as opposed to being in our 40s and 50s but like it's it, it, it's it's playing to it's playing to us as that market you know D wwe plays to the younger set which doesn't fly with people our age we don't like that stuff we like it to be a little bit more edgy and you know not quite not attitude era nonsense but like 
you know, a little ECW ish, a little, you know, a little harder edge, like that kind of stuff. Um, so with, like that appeals to me automatically way more. Like, you know, I flip over and watch, if I watch Raw or SmackDown, I see like, you know, WWE TikTok and things like this. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, I, I become instantly the oldest man in the universe because I'm just like, <laughs> just get this shit out of here, please. But like, that's, but that's when I re- tell myself that's not for me. Like, that's not the, I'm not the intended market for that. So I get it. I disagree with you, but with bias. I will admit okay. that I'm biased. I'm not objective when I say this because you're talking objectively. I'm a, I'm mm, biased. There's I'm a little a, bias I'm, in what I'm saying too. I'll, I'll I'll admit that. But I'm a WWE guy. I always have been, but it's mixed. All right. So I think WWE is better in terms of storytelling right now. Like you mentioned, the bloodline. It is the, it is peaked, but you still got Jey Uso. This is the first time Roman Reigns is winning a match coming up here at SummerSlam where I, there's a part of me that thinks that he could lose, just like with Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. Will he? Probably not, because I think you still got to get the Solo Sokoa stuff. I think that's going to be next. So it's like the implosion of the bloodline. But anyway, it's been a fun storyline to follow. Some things have won me over. I thought the Judgment Day was corny and whack as hell, but that kind of won me over in time. Um, <laughs> guys just get over like LA Knight. Yeah, I, I, I love him, but Vince is going to piss me off because every time a guy gets over in WWE, they mm-hmm. get to a certain point, and Vince is like, nah, that's enough. Like Sami yep. Zayn, you know, in Montreal, he almost wins the title. And he, he's a tag team champion now, but he's starting to get pinned more and more. You yep. can tell his push is kind of ending. Every time. Yeah, Drew McIntyre, same kind of deal. Yep. Um, And now I, I think you're, I'm predicting you're Nakamura for a while. I think you're going to see it with LA Knight, and that's going to piss a lot of people off as yep. well. Um, it goes it's, back to the I hate that it's so predictable like that because we've seen it how how many times I know going back to like even the eh, not, I don't know about the 90s but definitely early 2000s like sure. anytime somebody was getting a massive push and there's Hunter at the end and you're like oh all I got to do is beat Hunter at this massive pay per view well that should be yep. they, they should put him over no yep. no never like th- not even doing him the solid of having him having Hunter win it clean it's always right. you know, Pop him with the sledgehammer, and that's that. That it's like, oh, he got screwed, blah, 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 blah. and it's, he's never getting that shot again. I agree. <laughs> just, I, 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 like, that's the stuff that happens all the time. And like Reigns is Reigns is in that Triple H spot now. Like he's he's the guy. I mean, for right, rightfully so. Back back in Triple H's time, I I would have argued, but you know, you're married to the to the owner's daughter, right. so that's it's mixed in a little I, easier. I, I like politics. wrestling. Still all politics. I like I like. WWE characters, I think a little bit more still at this point. Like I'm a big Kevin Owens fan. I love Rhea Ripley. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, I love, I love watching Bianca Belair wrestle. I think she's awesome, yeah. but not the Fantastic. great, isn't the greatest story developing with her though right now. But anyway, my point is generally speaking that now on the wrestling side, I don't think the angles and the storylines are there. Although I am getting kick. I don't know if you've been watching it recently with uh, Adam Cole and MJF becoming best friends. That shit's pretty Dude, funny. That's that might be the best thing going on right now. Yeah, enjoy it while no, you can. There's no one or both of them is going to screw the other one. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's fun. But that aside, uh, the storylines to me aren't as great in AEW. But I think the wrestling is way better in the ring. Mm-hmm. I think the wrestling itself is better on AEW. So maybe it comes down to if you're more of a purist and you want to watch, you know, the wrestling, if you're yeah. you're higher on wrestling, I think AEW is a choice. I think if you're higher on stories and characters and to your point, youth yeah. and TikTok and, you know, <laughs> social media and shit like that, then I think WWE is, is, is a runaway. When it comes I mean, to that. you know, listen, I, I plus I, I'm not, a, again, I'm not a Homer guy, but like knowing people that are good pals with Danny Garcia and seeing him, I love so what he's doing see, now with it. He, he's dude. He's he's so good, and I'm glad he's getting a little bit of a nudge right now, like because he's he's oh man, he's awesome. He's he's he could be a monster star, like down the road. Give it like another three years. Love watching he'll him. Be, he'll be a huge star. Buffalo, and, by the way. So people, who oh don't yeah, know that. like straight up from Buffalo, and I've caught a few a few uh, other indie. Buffalo indie wrestlers popping into the background and some stuff. And it's like, Oh, Danny's bringing his boys in. Okay. That's kind of cool. <laughs> like just, you know, for like a one shot type thing, like here, you know, get DDT by somebody in the hallway or whatever, you know, take a, take a chair shot or something like <laughs> things like that. Or like, or, uh, the, uh, the, the, when they when MJF and Cole were at the gym, 
And there's the there was the really heavy wrestler in the back, the heavy guy in the background at the gym, yeah. and MGS <laughs> trying to make fun of him. That guy's a, a indie wrestler that you see around here quite often. His name he goes by Puff. Oh, like, really? He's I've seen him seen him wrestle at a South Buffalo gymnasium, like not not all that long ago. Like the you know it's again. It's for guys like our age that keep up with some of this stuff on the side or, you know, we're just total dorks about it. Like the people Vince hates more <laughs> essentially, like the people that call Vince on his bullshit. That's us. So I'll, it's not meant it's not meant for everybody. But like some of the stuff does cross over I, I, like the MJF Cole stuff is absolutely everybody can appreciate that. I think Garcia stuff, too. Uh, yeah. I think that I think that really flies well, even like. Jericho Appreciation Society, like that's just so ridiculous, and it's it's good. He always reinvents himself time and time again. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. I don't know if you've watched it yet, um, because it just premiered like about a week or so ago. But um, the Dark Side of the Ring, that series that runs on yeah. Vice, which is a great series, by the way, mm -hmm. for wrestling fans. Um, the, the latest episode, Adrian Adonis. Yep. Have you did you get a chance to see that one yet? I I saw it come up, and I was like, I'm I'm I stopped at whatever I was doing, and I was like, I'm watching this right now because yeah. I I'd, I'd heard the stories about because uh, I I didn't know until too recently that he was from Buffalo, and I was like, oh yeah, wow, grew okay. up on the west I side, really close I, to where I lived, dude. I was watching that, and I was like, I got a message, Pat, and like, did you hang out with this dude back in the day? Because like, <laughs> no, he's a little he bit old, like too old for you, right? Yeah, right. he was too old for me, but yeah, that was really cool. From the west side of Buffalo, and there's a lot of Buffalo references in this episode. Mm -hmm. Um. Of a former dude from the West Side who was in jail or something, couldn't go to one of the Adrian federal Hazard prison. Team. He said, Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was Jesus. pretty wild. So if you haven't, uh, guys, if you haven't, I was trying seen to pick that, out what bar he was in because they definitely shot that somewhere. It had to be in Buffalo. It had to be. I'm sure. I'm it, sure. Yeah, I, I wanted to know what bar he what bar he was in. I wonder if he was like <laughs> at like the Polish club or something like that, where <laughs> you know it's just easy to easy to sneak in there in the middle of the afternoon when there's nobody nobody coming around. <laughs> All right, man. I'll tell you what. Between wrestling and Yankee talks, we probably have frustrated the uh, everybody's turned the fans, this off by now. The fans long <laughs> enough for uh, for one episode, so uh, <laughs> we'll get out of here. Before that, though, like I said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you go to notedhockey.com. Um, follow Joe there, five bucks a month, man. Great content. Uh, follow him on Twitter as well at Joe Yurden. He'll put up a link when you and Lance do get together for a podcast or when you have an article on. Bleacher Report or all your uh, radio gigs and all that stuff like that. So you just go on uh, Joe's Twitter and uh, you can check that all out there. Thanks, buddy. Uh, you're going out of town next weekend or next week, I should say. So uh, uh, this weekend, uh, like coming up, I'll, I'm heading home some point this week, heading home to Albany, and then I'll be driving down to Philadelphia on probably Sunday because there's a Premier League doubleheader, friendly, friendly game, soccer. Like I, I do it all folks. Like that's, that's the way it goes. <laughs> but, uh, but my very problematic premier league team is playing in uh, Philadelphia problematic because of who owns them now, which is deeply upsetting, but, sure. uh, but yeah, like, uh, but they're playing and this is the first time I'm going to be able to catch them at all. I haven't been to England before, so I haven't been able to see them at their home place. So, Philly, Philly. Well, I could have gone to Philly or to Red Bull stadium in Harrison, New Jersey. I think going to the link was probably the better call so um so yeah so look really looking forward to that and also looking forward to sweating off 25 pounds sitting in the stands all day and drinking all right guys i'll be back with another episode tomorrow i'm gonna have anthony uh, marino from buffalo rumblings talk to you guys soon